10 dog yet. Labrador Retriever. Mm. I'm going to bring him in someday. Great. Awesome. What's his name? Jake. Jake. He has a, he's a Facebook week? page. He has a Facebook page? Yeah. Does he post on his wall? Yeah. My dog and my cat have Twitters. <laughs> follow Mike's cat. I don't even have a Twitter. <laughs> Me neither. As long as you're not James's dog, you can follow it. Mike's cat. cat. Yeah. Yeah, I tweeted like, the dog know, is really pissing me off today. <laughs> <laughs> you bring it up? I was going to. I can't remember what it is. Don't <laughs> hack into his account. Dog's He's the be, custodian for his dog. He's going to be pissed. He knows where, he is, he knows where his doggy biscuits come from. Is it age limit in dog years or? Yeah, how old is, you know, it's not seven years every year. First three years equal yeah, 21 sure. years. Seriously? Yeah, and then after that, stop counting. It's never quite seven years. So the first three are sevens, and then after that, it's what? Well, yeah, it's. There he is. Three, four, That's stop. a dog. I'm not sure it's actually Here's, seven. here's Jake of, right here. You know. Oh, oh puppy. Oh, oh, he's a yellow lab. Yeah, he's got he's a little a black dot on his head. Oh, it's the only from his black. His, his parents were black. <gasps> I think that's all he has to recognize. Yeah, he's. he's I wonder, so, I, he must be recessive, double recessive genes. Yeah, he's he on the couch, oh, over the so arm rest like this. Look at that face. Is a picture? He's getting a lot of babies. Look at that picture of his picture. body. He's all, he's So does he get, does he get, you know, mail from poodles and stuff? Does he? Does he get what? Mail from poodles. <laughs> he's busy. You know, he's a people so dog. He doesn't care about other dogs. He doesn't like other dogs. How much does he weigh? About 90, 6, 9, 7 pounds. He's big. He's skinny. Let me see him. Oh, oh, he went away. Oh, oh puppy. Oh, is he cute? Is that? Now, who's the black lab? That's just a friend that we visited. Oh. But like I said, he's he, smiling. He, he's he's smiling. smiling. Yeah, he does. He's smiling. <laughs> oh, look at that smile. He, 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 oh. You'll see his lips turn up when you do oh, something like that. Look at that face. Oh, oh he's, he's a happy dog. He looks like you, James. Oh, how old I is he? I know. He's, he's, he he's like really him. attached to me. He's he about does. six. Oh, I want a lab someday. What a cutie. Oh, he's wonderful. Uh -huh. he, he just listens so well to you. He's so smart. You know. They are smart dogs. I don't know what I'm doing with him. He's the best dog I ever had. And I've had probably about 15 labs in my life. Really? Wow. I th most I had at one time was three. You should breed him then. Well, I really was never interested in that. I'm just saying, if he's such a good Is dog, he you might make good. Oh, yeah. Well, he was actually a, 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 a rescue? A, no. Was he? He was a rescue dog. He, he was. was a rescue. Yeah. But of, of his brothers and sisters, he was the one that was always get jumped runs. on, and he was big, he was the biggest one. But he they all jumped on him. He didn't want mm -hmm. no part. He's a people dog. He's oh. just wanted to be with. Uh, oh, that's great. I miss funny. having a dog. Well, the, the best part about it's like the info here. You know, uh, let me tell you. Are you recording this dog conversation? I am actually. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna use okay, his employer that. is LabCorp of America. LabCorp. <laughs> and his job is sniffing things. <laughs> He went to call the college he went to was Dog College. Mm. And his concentration pretty good but easily distracted by dog bones. <laughs> Religious views, furry dogma, political views, independent <laughs> <laughs> Favorite quotations, who let the dogs out? <laughs> his favorite music is Three Dog Night. His books, Marley and Me. His movie, Bob Marley, <laughs> and his television was Lassie. So, his activities are sleeping and eating. And that voice is James Buckley. This is the Seclair Chatterbox Podcast. <laughs> talking about the love of dogs. Seclair Chatterbox Podcast. And he's sharing with us the Facebook page for his dog. Jake Buckley. So all of you sweet dogs out there who want to get to know a sweet dog, get on that Facebook page and put your paws on his wall. Yes, yeah, look, wow. for, look for Jake on Facebook and uh, be ask uh, ask for his friendship. He'll, he'll, he has a lot of friends. He has more friends than most people I know. He will lick your face. Beware. Uh, excellent way to start this one. <laughs> exactly the topic we were trying to get to here but uh but hey welcome to this claire chatterbox uh the show where we talk about what's on our mind and topics of the day and our experiences and our facebook pages uh i'm like sort director of web media here at Claire tears of mason joins me once again how you doing today good how are you and we have two students with us we like to touch base with the students you know see how it's going how, how they're enjoying their experience here at Claire. uh go ahead and introduce yourselves um my name's katie um, PA student at Duquesne. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I'm Elizabeth Derogi. I'm also a physician assistant student from Duquesne University. Oh, so you're Happy both at the same place, yep. mm -hmm. studying mm -hmm. in the same classes. Mm -hmm. How'd you end up at the same placement? Is that that's kind of unusual? That would be random. That's fate. That would be, that's random. <laughs> fate. It is. Yeah. Fate puts you together, puts you in the same school, and puts you in the same same placement. So you're doing your psych rotation. And how long does your rotation last? Approximately five and a half weeks. Five and a half weeks. Okay. Yeah. So what what's your goal when you come to to a place like Seclair? What's your what's your goal for your rotation? Besides survival. <laughs> That's <laughs> Passing. Passing. I don't know. I think it's about the experience more than anything. Just to see what you can, do what you can. Okay. Did you get to choose this place as opposed to, or did you just get assigned? Just randomly Just assigned. random assignment. Yes. Okay. So out of all of the psych potential places, uh, Western Psych and I don't know, where else do they, they send you for psych rotations? I know there's a uh, North Side and South Side. Mercy. Mercy. Mercy's Mercy's behavioral Mercy Behavioral Health. Behavioral Health. Okay. So you ended up here. W well, you have friends who are at these other places, right? And you get together and talk and share stories, war stories and all that. What, what's your, uh, what's your, you're thinking this is kind of an unusual and different sort of place, isn't it? Based on what you're hearing from your it's, friends? It's very calm. Yeah? Which is kind of nice because sometimes you get caught up in running here and running there and doing this in the hospital and just a nice kind of sit back and appreciate what you're doing. Get a little bit of time to think and mm -hmm. process things. Huh? Is that your experience, Katie? Well, I mean, compared to other places, they don't have like the DBT and mm -hmm. the yoga and yeah. the, all the group therapies and... Yeah, kind of unusual know. things here. Yeah, definitely. Reiki. Reiki, yeah. yep, all that good have stuff. Have you taken advantage of a Reiki session yet? Not yet. But we're going we, to. Not <laughs> <laughs> the jewelry, yeah, so... Yeah, so you're on definitely the future, that. hopefully. Yeah. And you've been attending the DBT groups? Yeah. The yeah. morning group only. Morning group. Just We've been do it, running them at the hospital. Mm -hmm. And you're doing them also at the hospital. And the hospital you're talking about is Torrance, correct? Correct. Okay. Are you going to any other locations outside of St. Clair? Just here in Torrance. Just here in Torrance. Yeah. So what's been your experience with, with running DBT groups at Torrance? I actually really like Torrance. Yeah. And I think, I mean, not that I like it more or less. I just really feel like I'm making a bigger impact mm -hmm. when I'm there because people are really, like, Patients want you there, and the patients mm -hmm. are very responsive to the students being there. So I really enjoy that aspect. Mm -hmm. okay. So are you running the group mm -hmm. out there? Um, who are you running the group with? Just the two of you? Ourselves. <laughs> You're doing it together? Just the students. Good for you. Yeah. Okay. And so how many people do you have uh, attending your group? Depends. I think the enti it's for the entire floor, which has 26 patients. But okay. I mean, we get anywhere from, I would say... 15 At to least, 20. yeah, I'd say a small group. I mean, they come in and out too mm -hmm. with other things going on, but yeah, there's a good majority of the patients there. How much your experience been with that? Very positive. Yeah, yeah. they seem to really enjoy it. Now, I think we could tell them to do anything and they'd try it yeah. at least once and see <laughs> what they get out of it. So. Yeah, we could have that in all areas of our life, huh? Yeah. They're, they're so much more willing to participate than patients are here. Uh-huh. Okay. So, <laughs> so you've you noticed that difference. Yeah. yeah. You mean in terms of the group? Well, you've been to yeah. the DBT group here. So they're, they get more into the activities and they talk more about their experiences? Mm-hmm. Okay. They all have something to say about everything. <laughs> about everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got any, any stories for us that you can tell without violating any confidentiality? I mean, they do some really good mindfulness there. Yeah. The patients often lead them, and it's, I don't know, it's neat to see their perspective of mm, how, what their relaxing <laughs> environment is and how to, like, yeah. go about mindfulness and stuff. It's, a lot of them are really good and relaxing, and some of them are just kind of neat to experience <laughs> what they think so it is. They've been expanding your perspective of things, it sounds like. Yes. Um, what, was your, what was your expectation when you... When you went out there, you're going to a state hospital. There aren't too many of those left. You're dealing with patients, clients who, who are really struggling, who are really, really having difficult problems. So difficult that they can't live at home. They can't live out of a facility. And uh, what was your thought about that the first time you went? First time we walked in, I was a little bit scared yeah. <laughs> because I'd never been in an environment like that. Yeah. I didn't know 
what to expect. I didn't know if they were violent. I didn't know if they were going to respond to me. If it's a little bit of an intimidating building, if I recall. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. It's not very warm and fuzzy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we didn't build those places to be warm and fuzzy. No, no, yeah, we didn't. We didn't. put them out in the barbed the wire. And <laughs> yeah, 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 the big fuel almost, dollar. It was like a prison. Huh? That was actually my first uh, when first starting here. I had to visit out there, and mm-hmm. it was like. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Have you been out there, James? Yes. Uh, I, That's right. You do music out there. Yeah, I do music. Everyone uh, loves my, you. my name is James Buckley, and I'm part of the Seclair uh, uh, experience here. And uh, I must say that uh, you know I was a bit scared the first time that I you know walked in here. I didn't know what to expect, and you know you you can only imagine things like that until you actually get in front of it. But. but uh, you know, you met. You mentioned how they, they they built them to look like prisons, and mm-hmm. and they built them so they're not really warm and fuzzy. Well, I, you know, when I hear that, I say, you know what? That's probably some something to think about because with the, the approach that Seclair takes with the holistic uh, ways of, of working with people beyond medications and traditional methods, that maybe the environment. If it was a little bit friendly might also help as well as long as it's safe and you know no one can get hurt if we were somewhere to make it a little bit more uh, pleasant to the eye we're, we're pleasing the ears with the music mm-hmm. we're pleasing their bodies with yoga let's please their eyes with a nice comfortable place that mm-hmm. they f- f- sort of feels like a home to them and yeah, maybe and some warm colors and yes some colors. exactly yeah. instead of so cold as it yeah. is you know when, when, you, when you're in a place it's cold like that you feel cold mm-hmm. you don't feel warm mm-hmm. and fuzzy yeah. so um, there's something to be said for that i think yeah. Yeah. so you've been out there when james has been out there playing music yeah and, and really? so what do, you, what do you notice when he's there what happens with the with the clients they all love it yeah. and they love him. Mm-hmm. James, you can tell James loves it. I think is why. <laughs> so so what? What our listeners can't see is this great big grin on yeah. his face. From which, is, hey, which you see yeah, every yeah. time he starts talking about it. Too. It really, really can't help it. I, I mean, you know, you you saw when I was there uh, yesterday. I, I told them that I love them all. I, they're like children to me, and, mm-hmm. and they really are. And you know, that's how I feel, and that's how I approach it. And they they treat me. They treat me really well, and and you know, I, I didn't expect that yeah. to come back to me in that way, you know, but it's really happening. They really are real people yeah. with real emotions, and really have care for other people and other things, and yeah. I think that's that helps their, uh, you know, their therapy is being able to feel like yeah. they can care for somebody you being know? able to be responded to by you and by the students and by people who come there and say you know we want to be a part of your lives and we want you to be part of our lives yeah and, and, I, and I and I said to them as soon as I walked in I said I almost didn't make it you know and the, the, I said what if I don't make it someday and a big <laughs> big groan you know all, this, all at the same time I said, oh come on you I said well if I get sick or something you know, I, I, I don't want to miss it I really do look forward to it yeah. you know it's every every day it's every every week I go there it's it's a bit of therapy yeah, for me and you bring well. in some sunshine and and some hopefulness to them and your songs that, that you you sing your songs that you yeah, those very songs. very hopeful very um, uh, heartfelt very deep very soulful um, music that it sounds like they're really relating to as you're speaking to what's real in their lives as well they do and, and uh, I've performed uh, a lot of the, my own material for other people mm-hmm. and you know they, there's always connections going on but here I'm connecting with people in, in there and I say to myself you know what they, they're you know what so what's wrong with that why why can't they who says that they can't feel the same way that other people feel about stuff and mm-hmm. can't talk about it and relate it mm-hmm. and, and that's what they do so just because somebody is having so much difficult with difficulty with uh, managing emotional regulation or their behavior that they can't live at home or they can't live in the community doesn't mean that they don't feel that they don't care about themselves and about each other you see that there you know, they're responding to you on that level. I think the music really brings out a different side of them, too. It's mm-hmm. so like yesterday, I got up and I was dancing with them and having a good time. And afterwards, um, one of the patients came up to me and said, you know, if you weren't up there dancing, I wouldn't have been either. And just, mm-hmm. and he he's kind of an intimidating guy, too. Mm-hmm. And for him to say that, 
yeah. really see a different side. Yeah, that meant something to you too. You mm-hmm. can see. Yeah, you stretched him, and he gave you a perception of things that you hadn't had before mm-hmm. in terms of what's real for these patients. That's neat. Yeah, that was really rewarding. Yeah. So, are they do you feel? I mean, b- between you guys and, and the patients there, uh, how does it go during the day? I mean, you know, before I get there, what's it like? I mean, is it is it the same? Does some does you know? Do they interact with you well or feel? Do they look at you as an outsider, or do they feel like connected to you somehow? Like you're more of a just someone that they can trust. I think at first they're shy, just like we are, mm-hmm. but now. At first, we were the ones that would be like, oh, hi, how are you? Like, oh, hi, like, approach them. And now a lot of them approach me and say, hi, how are you? Like, like we're more companions. Like than we're friends. Yeah, like, they accept us now and know why we're there and that. We're so just, just there to talk and help. And yeah. they treat you differently, you think, than the staff that are there all the time? So you notice a difference? Yes. Yeah. So they, they, they live in the, I mean, the world doesn't really change too much for them. Yeah. Uh, I was discussing this uh, before, that, that, that they, you know, there's so many walls, there's so many rooms that they're accustomed mm-hmm. to going to, and of course we know that they're kind of cold and not really warm and mm-hmm. fuzzy, but, you know, that's, that's their whole life every day, and then when someone comes in from the outside, like us, uh, that's a little bit of like opening a window for them, mm-hmm. you know, to let yeah. some sunshine come in. A little world in. coming in and yeah, manageable exactly. doses. Exactly, and they, yeah. and they take that they well, for what it's worth, mm-hmm. and then when it's over, they they say, okay, that was nice, that was good, and they know it's going to come back. Mm-hmm. So it gives them some sort of hope because they don't have much in, in their confinement. You know, they, there's not much to hope for. They have to deal with each other and the staff, and it's a very small area to do that. Mm-hmm. So I think they enjoy you know, students coming in and others. Yeah. And well. so you're also teaching them some skills to manage those relationships that they have to have day in and day out mm-hmm. when they get annoyed with each other. You know, trying to decide who's going to get to sit in that chair, who's going to get to decide what's on TV, <laughs> who's going to who's going to get uh, in line first at the cafeteria. Yeah, they, they are like children. That's <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and how do we resolve conflicts? And so what are you teaching them in your DBT classes? What are the, what are the skills that you're working on? Um, well, just this week we talked a lot about... Um, give we did give in our big dbt group and talked a lot about how to initiate Mm -hmm. conversations with people if you don't know what give stands for it's um you want to be gentle Mm -hmm. show interest in what you're talking about validate the other person and use an easy manner when Mm -hmm. conversing so so some some real practical skills and how to approach another person in uh, in a non-threatening way in a way that Mm -hmm. that they're going to want to be with you and they're responding to that they were I'm very knowledgeable. Yeah? Yeah. They knew, half of them knew what it was. They already knew it. <laughs> <laughs> they so they taught us <laughs> some, too. So did you do some, uh, some role play and behavior rehearsal in the group? We did. We split in, like, pairs and did mm-hmm. examples, and they did great. I mean, I actually, we were uneven for patient numbers, so I partnered up with one of the patients. Mm-hmm. And I think she dominated the conversation and did very well, where I thought I would have to lead it yeah. and like urge her into, mm-hmm. nope, she led it, we stayed on topic, she validated me, I validated her, <laughs> was interested, it was, she did great, so that's it was great. like, I learned something too. That's, so. something too. that's the best, that's the best healing relationship when both people get a chance to learn something. Mm-hmm. And grow. That's great. So you're both in this program for five and a half weeks, and then you go on to your next rotation. Uh, what, do you know what that's going to be? I get a general surgery. General surgery? Where do you go? Um, OB-GYN. OB-GYN, okay. Do you have an idea of what kind of specialty you're looking for when you graduate? You think you know, (laughs) and then you don't. Uh (laughs) So we just have to be open to all the experiences. So what did you think you knew before you started? I thought I was going to be gung-ho, go surgery, Mm -hmm. and... I enjoy it, and I did a little bit my last rotation, mm-hmm. but I think after doing internal medicine, you kind of get, you develop those relationships with patients, and you don't just see them for 15 minutes and then never again. When they're unconscious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and draped, you get yeah. to see one little part of them. Yeah, so you're enjoying the, the interactions, the, the patient care, the mm-hmm. real eye-to-eye stuff, and your experience uh, here at C. Claire and at, at uh, 
the Torrance is really going to put you in good stead as an internist, you know, as somebody who can pick up on psychological distresses that uh, other doctors may not be real clear on. You know, what do you what do you think you've learned so far that's gonna that's that's really going to be a a boom to that kind of uh, understanding for you? Um, Dr. Chaudhry is big on knowing the DSM criteria, mm -hmm. like the back of your hand. So I think that'll <laughs> kind of help us out in the future. Yeah, yeah. And and for those who don't know what DSM is, it's the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual that that uh, of of um, mental illnesses, and it basically is the the descriptions of uh, the problems that people present with. And uh, so that we can, when we're talking about them, we can all be talking about the same thing and know that uh, you know, we're on the same page with that. And it helps us think about how, uh, what the, the prognosis is, what the course of treatment would be, and uh, what the etiology of the disorder is. So it's really important to know that. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a lot of material to digest. That, that DSM manual is a, is a big sucker. That's yeah, <laughs> awful. <it's all> <laughs> 10 pounds to carry around. And a new one is coming out uh, very soon, which uh, will be revealing you know, some new categories and uh, understandings of, of uh, behavioral issues and mental health issues. So, so Katie, what are you looking to do for your career? I mean, I really, I actually enjoyed My first rotation was my general surgery. I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> so you're doing an OBGYN next? I am. You're going to get called at all hours of the day and night? Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> it's so rewarding, though. <laughs> did you do yours already? I just had that. You did it? That was the one right before this. Did you get to deliver some babies? Yeah, I got, well, I got to help. Yeah. So, kind of catch them. <laughs> 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 I love that part though. I loved it. You love that part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Getting called at three in the morning routinely probably isn't so much fun though. Because oh. babies like to be born at odd hours. I mean, I actually haven't been on call for any of yeah. my rotations. So, oh, yeah. We sort of, a couple of ours are a distance away as well. So, mm -hmm. we really can't be oh, an hour away. So, by the time I make it there, it'd be too late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're still not sure what your ultimate aim is, huh? No, I mean, yeah. I'm, I I know what I don't want. <laughs> I would say more than what I do. But That's right now, I still got a lot to go, so. Yeah, well, knowing what so you don't want is just as important as knowing what you do want. Process of elimination. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so you um, mentioned that, that, that the patients were different that you saw here in the outpatient setting in terms of, of how they approach DBT. Or have you noticed in, in other ways? You, you've had a chance to sit in on some, some uh, sessions or some evaluations that were done. Have you had a chance to do any of that yet? Yeah. You, know, you mean like counseling? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what's your, what's your impression of the differences there? It's nice. M the majority of patients will let us sit in too. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't feel comfortable doing that, but mm -hmm. I don't know, I'd say the inpatients compared to the outpatients are just more open mm -hmm. and willing to share pretty much anything and everything, whereas your outpatients are still sort of trying to hold yeah. that exterior. Yeah. Up the front. Keep, They're more keep worried that persona about the together. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Um, but also we can see that sometimes when people are very open, that's not always appropriate. You know? Mm -hmm. How many times have you been on a public transportation or someplace where you walk off the bus and you have someone's social history in your pocket because they told you their life story and the half hour ride you had, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we can say, wow, they're really open, but that's a level of openness that's mm -hmm. not really going to serve them well uh, and it's not that's really secure. safe for them. Yeah, so um, we have to think about context of openness as well, so mm -hmm. yeah, those things are, are always tricky. But I'm glad you've had the experience that you've had at Torrance. That's great. So we uh, tend to put the, the, the students through different kinds of paces here at, uh, <laughs> at C. Clair. They're sometimes digging uh, in the garden. Have you had a chance to do that yet? We're doing a season change. It snows a little deterrent. <laughs> snows a deterrent. But yeah, well, you should talk to Sandy. That's no deterrent for her when she's out there. Mm -hmm. Run out barefoot. Her true, barefoot yeah. in the mud. So you're lucky she shouldn't have you out there digging, uh, digging weeds in the mud or something. And you'll probably miss the chickens, but when they come, they'll be 
Yeah. 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 What was it called? Did you make the main dish? No. Nope. Oh, the one, the one that, that Sandy made with the with fruit the and oh, quinoa. Quinoa, yes. <laughs> the quinoa. <laughs> That's that one. Yeah, the one with the weird name that doesn't look like yeah. it's not spelled the way it sounds. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it should be quinoa. Yes. <laughs> I, I, had, Jeff calls I had no idea of quinoa before yeah. I came. I never heard of it until today. today. Yeah. yeah, it's a very ancient uh, grain. Apparently, mm. the Mayans used. I guess it's great for you. Yeah, it's very good for you. Yeah, tastes good too. Yeah. Yeah. And so, what part of that did you make? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I I did a lot of the cutting. I cut the fruits and helped add the ingredients. What all was in there? There were there's mandarin mandarin oranges? oranges, pineapple, Ooh. chalice, shallots. Can you grab those? Yeah. No, no what else? Oh, then it was just the then it was just chicken broth. Mm. There was a um, a garlic like spread. What is the like the stuff you can squirt out of the bottle? Yeah. Squirtable garlic. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? The paste. Garlic paste. paste. Garlic paste. Okay. So you mixed it all together? Mm, all right. So we've had you cooking. Have you done any cooking yet? No, I don't think they want me to. <laughs> 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 I wasn't really gifted in that area. Yeah. Oh, we do have some gifted cooks here. That's true. But, you know, gifts are, you know, you can pick it up, you know. You can't say just because you didn't do it before, you can't do it. So I'll be doing other things, uh, putting packets and things together and all kinds of different tasks, but cooking is a, is a big one around here. We like to eat. Yeah, we like so to feed each other. That was a lot of food that we went through today. We did. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything like <laughs> So I'm curious, what do, you, what do you tell your friends and people about this place when you leave here? I mean, <laughs> no, I know I have some experiences trying to explain what I do to my friends, and I work here. <laughs> What do we tell them? I don't know. It's an experience. But they'll ask you to say, well, wow, what's that place like? What's it like there? You know? It's <laughs> I mean, it's sort of hard to explain. It's a lot of, especially compared to like past rotations, this is just a lot of listening and observing and mm -hmm. sort of the experience, the yoga and the DBT and the music mm -hmm. and the cooking. So it's just sort of, I don't even have to enjoy it. I mean, More than other ones. Do you say it's 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 a piece of cake, or it's <laughs> <laughs> no? I mean, because we get topics every week and stuff that we have to learn. We will challenge so we definitely yeah. learn. Yeah, but at the same time, we're learning the little thing, the yoga, right. and mm -hmm. yeah. the mindfulness mm -hmm. stuff. You really don't see outside of here. So. No, and then and that's that's part of the uh, initiative is to try to uh, explore those areas a little bit more so that. We see how effective they are in with with people and treating them yeah. beyond the traditional methods that we have. And then we also use those skills ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. you can't sure. can't yeah. just uh, you know tell people you got to do this and then not do it yourself. Mm -hmm. So having a chance to it's you know, it's nice. It. Doc joins in on our yoga yeah. often, yeah. so it's neat to see that what he recommends. He does yeah. the DVT yeah. groups. He. Yeah. Yeah, does a meditation. Mm -hmm. I think I've learned more for myself how to control my anxiety than giving back to others. I think we all have anxiety, sure. Yeah, got to work it. And that's something that, that, you know, patients, clients often don't believe, you know, they don't realize that we're somehow, we know it all, and we're all perfect, and we don't have problems in our lives. But the reality is everybody struggles, everybody has problems. You know, there's a, a great saying that uh, I heard recently that comes from AA, don't compare your outsides with other people's insides, which I really like. And it's mm -hmm. so easy to do that. You know, It's so easy to look out there and, and see, hey, everybody else looks like they're having a great life and looks like they're all put together and, and I feel so lousy and you know, I'm having all these problems, but that's my insides. And mm -hmm. you know, if you stopped all those people and sat them down and had a conversation like we're having today, like, what's going on in your life? You know, what are the, what are the stressors? They'd be telling you all kinds of things. That they're struggling with. You know? but we don't wear our insides on our outsides most of the time. And so we look all put together and <laughs> sharp and great to those <laughs> folks out there. So that's a good thing to think about. All right, well, thank you. I'm glad that you're here. 
um, students come and go pretty quickly, and we get attached to them, and then ah, they got to go. And <laughs> finally, learn our names. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, this is really fun for me. Yeah, finally learn your names. But we learn your souls a lot sooner than we learn your names. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And so that's always a treat for us to have you. And well, thank you for having that. us. Yeah, yeah definitely. And we always hope that you'll come back and visit again. And uh, also that if you decide after all your rotations that psychiatry is really the place for you, <laughs> uh, this is where you want to be. Then or taking care of chickens is really. For that's you. right. <laughs> um, Maybe we'll have a, a new specialty of chicken psychiatry. <laughs> you know, and, uh, mm. and talk to the vegetables and you know, make sure that we <laughs> make sure <laughs> healthy, grow healthy, whole, holistic vegetables. You know, but uh, definitely think about that and come back and see us. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for. Uh, on uh, on the chatterbox, <laughs> uh, please go to uh, sclera.com for past episodes. And uh, you know when we're going to record live, we're going to start uh, you know for people being able to chime in a little bit. Uh, uh, you know as we record these because uh, we do it every second Friday of of the month. Uh, we do a batch of these. Uh, if you have any comments or ideas for future episodes, want to participate, please uh, drop us an email at mike at seclair.com. And uh, please continue the conversation on our blog in the comments for this episode at seclair.com slash blog. And we'll see you guys next time in the chatterbox.